Well, folks, uh, welcome to this week's episode of Two Idiots Talking About Art. I am W. Nelda Skorik here with Rodney Thompson. Mm. So, uh, this week it marks the opening of East, uh, uh, annual art exhibition that happens here in Austin, Texas, uh, called East Austin Studio Tour East. Um, both Rodney and myself are actually participating in it this coming week, uh, going on for two weeks on, uh, what is the date for that? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> wow. I, was like, I feel like it's, oh, it's the, the one that? thing that I, <laughs> I prepared for. Uh, going on the uh, 12th, 13th, and the 19th, and the 20th, uh, we'll be showcasing our work. So, uh, coming towards the end of our season one, we thought it would be fun to go ahead and interview ourselves. So this is going to be a back-to-back -back episode this week and next week. Um, this week, I'll be interviewing Ronnie Thompson, and the following week, he'll be doing the same to me. So, yeah, this is a very uh, awkward scene that we already kind of interviewed ourselves, but I don't know. Maybe you... I feel you, like there's so much about you that I haven't learned yet. Me neither, yeah. I feel like I know you, then again, who are you? Yeah. I don't. And for the audience, you know, if we haven't talked about ourselves enough... <laughs> This coming two episodes, you'll be learning much more about us. And yeah. Probably more than you even really want to. Yeah. Well, it all depends on our questioning skills, isn't it? I feel you like, should. yeah, in the last six months or so, I feel like we got it better. And this is a, this is a time, the moment to see how truly we've actually honed that skill. All right. So let's get right to it. Uh, let's bring on our fantastic... Interview of the week, Ronnie Thompson, and let's hope uh, it's a good one. Hope you enjoy. Oh. Oh. We are back, and today, again, for our awesome interviewee, we have Ronnie C. Thompson. The C is for correct. Yeah, hey, I guess I do know you well. So yeah, we have Ronnie Thompson. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, again, I don't know what was going through your head when you decided to sh sign up and participate in this uh, podcast to it is talking about art, but we welcome you with open arms. Thank you. I was very concerned, but you seem like a nice gentleman. We tried. We tried. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Bonnie son, uh, would you like to go ahead and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, you know, and whatever extent you like? Uh, well, my name is Rodney Thompson, of course. I am a Portrait artist, and I dabble in portraiture, <laughs> both in oil, pastel, charcoal. But I also do some surreal work, and as just like what I have behind me there, mm -hmm. it's a person on fire. Yep, there. Uh, yeah. Oh, and that's kind of like the. That's generally where my work has been heading for the last year and a half. It's more surreal, with so, its foot in reality. And you, uh, you're originally from Texas. Yes. Study in San Francisco. Correct. Move back to Texas. Yes. Then move to Oregon. <laughs> yes. And Which now, is really, it's my home base, kind of basically. Yeah, but uh, you're currently back in. Uh, you're in Sacramento now, right? Uh, at the moment, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're still heading back. And forth. Oh, back and forth in Oregon. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. How is the art scene in Sacramento? You like it? Uh, much better than. In Oregon, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm still like learning it. You know, it's it, yeah. 
It's uh, it's it has a cool mural festival. They just had some kind of studio tour that I wasn't able to get to, but oh, nice. unfortunately, uh, something similar to East Austin Studio Tour, but I think it's more just scattered around the whole city oh, okay. instead of just being like located at one spot. That's just the entirety of it. Yeah, I think that's how it works. Uh, actually, actually, uh, East has evolved because you know West, right? West. Yeah. 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 So, this was going on before I left Austin. Yeah. But it now it just started. Now it's bundled. Yeah. Cause they do it like it used to kind of be one, like, one week and one, mm, one the other. Yeah. yeah or it's it, like staggered, right? So it used to be place. a back to back or something, but now it's yeah. uh, west, west and east, and then east. So the mid portion of it, which is the uh, 12th and 13th, is just all across Austin, which is going to be yeah. insane. Makes more sense, actually. I hated that, yeah. you know. West never got the attention back then, so now this way, yeah. Anywho. Yeah, I always feel like West is like, also West Austin as cool as East Austin. Yeah. No offense, yeah. West Austin. No, no. I mean, I was, I- Still lots of love for you. I always lived in the West Side, so yeah. I'm not dissing it, but yeah, it never. Yeah. East it, was always a bigger deal. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, well, so let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, your art style in general. Yeah. So, like I said, okay. uh, you're more into the uh, surreal art, uh, surrealism, as of now. But you do a lot of oil paints, charcoal. Actually, you kind of touch touch pretty much all medium at this point, right? I'm a jack of all trades and a master of none. I would like to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say that. Yeah. <laughs> I think like at this moment with. Uh, school and everything i I'm, I'm like 85 percent oil yeah maybe 90 percent. i did like i had a head drawing course last semester but it uh uh still didn't mm -hmm. add up to the amount of oil painting i've been doing does it just kind of um, naturally for focus or gear into that direction if you're taking your master's like oil, is oil just kind of like the foundation as far as any of those kind of program goes or was it by choice yeah, that's more by my choice okay i wanted to put a lot of focus into painting and um i got the drawing stuff pretty well down i just need i wanted to get my like really put all of my attention into painting and and uh yeah hmm. Build, learning more you know just building narratives and refining my my portraiture skills and, yeah 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 well Let's talk something uh, a little bit about your specific series that you got going on. Uh, so you're a huge uh, mental uh, advocate for mental health, mental health awareness. Uh, so you yes. have the, what is, is it the fi fire series or the flame series? Either way. Yeah. It's, Either way. I would just say fire series, but yeah. Fire series. Flame, fire. How did you end up into that route? Or how did you come across this uh, specific series that you've been Pretty much working on for the last, I don't know, like five, year and a half. You think so? uh, that's longer than yeah. that? Is it about a year and a half? No, it's only been about a year and a half. Okay. Yeah, I just just recently really fully got into it. I did one that was probably about three or four years ago. I yeah, do it for a while. But uh, I so guess that could be what you're thinking about. Maybe but, uh, I guess you did. You've been working on it more consistently in the last yeah. year and a half or so. Yeah, it's mostly what I do aside from like that kind of stuff for school. So yeah, tell, uh, tell us a little bit more about the series itself and like how how did you land on this particular uh, style? So there is a uh, a lot of weight like influences that, that brought it up. <clears throat> I uh, I can name just a few off the top of my head that are oh obviously mental health. Like I, I wanted a way to kind of trade mental health and you know just some of the stuff that's been. And just how it's viewed in society. And I feel like, you know, seeing somebody walking down the street with their head on fire and you just like, don't think twice about it. Yeah, yeah. That seemed like a perfect example of how people view mental health. Um, the very uh, American uh, mentality right yes. there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So uh, also there's a uh, Floyd album. Wish you were here. Like that was a big influence. Uh, oh, okay. Because I had a guy on. Like there were two guys shaking hands, and one of them has like little sparks of flame coming off of him. And there is a kind of, yeah, I kind of remember. Like that. I, yeah. I cannot remember the name of the band. Uh, they had a a video with a guy just running on fire. It's from the nineties. Was it a or, music video or is it? Yeah, actual... it's a music video. What is that? Uh, not 
bad religion, I don't think. No. God, who the hell was that? Anyway, like Anyways. that video was amazing for me. Mm-hmm. And this guy just ran down the street. Nobody's like really looking at him. He's fully engulfed in flame. Mm-hmm. Um, that was an influence. Okay. And then more recently, uh, uh, an artist named Alexander Delmseth, I believe that's how you say his name. Okay. Uh, he is, let me double check. I think I said it wrong the last time I had an interview and well, it said he was at a totally different place than he actually is. Mm. But he does, he's painted a lot of like owls flying on fire or just, you know, in trees and fire. And okay. It's really, really beautiful. That sounds uh, really, that sounds really cool. Yeah. Uh, and I'll send you his, is it for, he's Swedish. Yeah, he's a Swedish artist. Okay. And um, like uh, his most recent painting he's done is it's not an owl on fire. It's like a, this magical space owl. <laughs> I, that's the best way I can describe it. All right. I got but it. It's just I got a beautiful look color. I got to look this um, up. And if, I, if I type in owl on fire painting, would it come up? It might come up. Yeah. I'm going to send you his profile too. Oh, I think I found um, it. Wait. You found him? Wait. No, there's surprising a lot of <laughs> this guy. Go follow him. Can't see it. It's so blurry. Oh, come on. What's the name? It, it's oh, Alexander. What? Fion. I think fiance. Fiance. Right. I think that's right. Alexander, I'm so sorry if I butchered that. Fio. Yeah, let's go to FY. Um. Uh, yeah, I, I follow his work for years, and he's he's incredible. Oh, cool! I'm I'm definitely a big fan of his. Uh, oh, it, it only struggled to look up, look him up just now because surprising, there's a lot of painters painting owls on fire. So. Yeah, <laughs> or like like the feathers are all like almost like a phoenix oh, looking. Yeah. You know, that's pretty cool. Yeah, no, but he's he's been like the most recent big influence, and okay. uh, and of course the increasing mental health. Uh, lack of recognition that's been going on. Well, I guess there's more awareness that, yeah. that's been happening, which is great, but I, I think it's also coming to light how little is actually being paid attention to and how mm-hmm. little resources there are for it. So, as far as yeah, the, it was as, important for me to depict. Yeah. Um, as far as the series in itself goes, um, so you depict the, uh, so you do a really, uh, great job of realism within the portrait itself but the flame itself is almost what's the best way to put it in contrast to your figures it's a little bit more well you do have a very stylized, bold, very stylized a bold a bold thick amount of a paint that actually gets laid onto it i don't it's not cartoony it's not illustrative it's very uh i guess more symbolic flame than an actual like realism yeah. that you're kind of trying to achieve with the portraiture like what was the uh, what was the reason? Yeah, I think that that's or... my my bridge into the surreal side, side, where it's almost a little dreamlike. It's a it's little, little um, almost, almost other dimensional way. way. I guess, I guess you, you could say, say it's like, it's like just, because just because we're so, we're so detached, detached from, from the people, people who are like like uh, are struggling with their mental health, so yeah. detached, detached from the reality. reality. Mm-hmm. That's a way. Of oh, showing yeah, that it's not a very real. Some of them look a little more realistic, but yeah. a lot of them don't. Yeah. And, um, and I, I like to use the the really thick impasto on there, too, to kind of mm-hmm. give it uh, direction for the flame so you can physically see the movement mm-hmm. or, like, you know, you can see the, the brush stroke texture pulling a flame around like it's actually moving that way. Um, but also it helps pull it out of the 2D and into the 3D. Mm-hmm. So it becomes a little more a part of reality versus than just visualized visu- or visually, you know, seeing the 2D reference. Yeah. So I mean, you it, it, it translates much better in person versus like Instagram or, or whatever, you know. Yeah. You can kind of see what I do, but like close-up shots and stuff of it. But it, mm-hmm. once you actually have it, near you and you can see the texture it's always more and it's funny too because i when i very first started doing it i thought i was putting on 
so much texture. Yeah. And as I've gotten more and more into the series, I, I just continue to like build up and build up and build up and pile up paint. Mm hmm. Or I've gone back and looked at some of the first ones I did. I'm like, oh, I barely put anything on. You're like, let, let me let me just <laughs> fix that right now. Let me put a yeah. apply a little bit more. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> let me just like put a bucket of paint on it. <laughs> I mean, so flames are hard. I mean, if if you ever tried taking a picture of like a campfire or something <clears throat> like that, it never looks as cool or even realistic, you yeah. know. But you you found a way to depict that really convincingly. So. Good job. Thank you. It's it's really a challenge. I bet. And if you look at Alexander's work, I mean, he he nailed it. He knows how to do fun. Did a good job, yeah. Really well. Um, he, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, it's it, it's tricky to paint because it's not a static no thing no. at all. No. I mean, you have to be able to act, make it look like you caught it in a moment, mm -hmm. and not just like you're. This is what fire is supposed to look like with little pointy tips. And oh, you capture them. Whatnot, you know, you capture the movement very well. Well done. Thank well you. Done. Actually, my favorite piece out of your fire series is Utopia. Oh, really? Uh, I love that one. You're not on fire. Let's just, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. the world itself is on fire. And mo most importantly, I, I love what you've done with yourself. It is, it is, it is a, imaginative self-portrait i guess that's the best way to put it yeah yeah because uh, it's fairly accurate like i that's i look like a hot mess that day when i took it and my beard was super overgrown and my hair was just like oily well, and terrible what kind of is it right? didn't you didn't you say you kind of added a, a bit of an aging to yourself though the, a little the, bit but it's not much like that's all my green i well I'm, i probably put a little bit more green in my beard but that's okay yeah Nah, it's so good. If uh, for those that have no idea what I'm talking about, highly recommend checking it out on Instagram. Thank you. I think you're like one of three people who really like that one. <laughs> really? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh. It didn't. When I posted it, it didn't get a whole lot of interest. But I mean, well, I didn't expect it to. That was definitely a, a, one of my more intense well pieces. So you can't let you can't allow yourself to judge. You know. The quality oh, yeah, of your no, work based on how many thumbs up you got or a heart. No, totally. You get. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had no ex expectation for that one. I just wanted to post it. You I, know, have to keep myself in the algorithm a little bit. Sure. Oh, no. Um, don't sell yourself short with it. I love it. All right. Thank you. Uh, moving on. Other style of art that you seem to love a lot. And we briefly talked about it um, in the previous episodes or almost all the time. Skull. You love drawing skulls. I do. What's up with that? I do love drawing skulls. <laughs> As he holds up the <laughs> sticker. Uh, what was that? What was that sticker? It was just a cool sticker. I think Brianna got it for me. Create or die. Nice. Yeah. I like it. Um, I do love drawing skulls. I like dark evil stuff. Yeah, was... And I love drawing skull, the anatomy of a skull. It's really it's challenging and uh, you, you can get so much like great light and mm -hmm. shadow in a, in a skull and make it look um, really, I don't know, just like make it look really creepy. You can make it look really beautiful. And, and it's, yeah, I love drawing and painting skulls. Um, do you, where do you get your reference for it? Or are, are, I just look on Pinterest yeah. most of the time. And I also have uh, Floyd, Floyd the skull, which I don't know where he is. Ooh, see, that's one Somewhere thing I need to get. I need my own skull and, and absolutely oh, yeah. name him or her. Yeah. Here, hang on. Let me go get him. I got to let him join the interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I wonder if... If you were to purchase a skull, would it be an identified whether it was a male or a female skull? Or... Oh. Nice, nice, nice. Where'd you get that? This is off Amazon. Really? Yeah. I need to get one. Really? I, I, cool. Actually, I was this close in buying an actual, like, well, full grown adult sized uh, like skeleton. skeleton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've almost done that so many times. Because I could get it for like a yeah, hundred yeah, bucks. Yeah. I'm like, ooh. If only I could find a nice little spa a space or a spot in my room where it's not going to freak, freak me out every single time I walk into my house. Yeah. Um, you haven't done a 
skull on fire yet, which I noticed. Is it because people are going to assume that it's uh, Ghost Rider? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I've thought about that. <laughs> I, I've, I definitely thought about doing a skull on fire, uh, and uh, not for like any. I wouldn't care if anybody referenced Ghost Rider. I love Ghost Rider. So sure. Um, I've even thought about just doing an actual Ghost Rider piece, mm-hmm. and that's uh, cool. See what that looks like. Like, and did submit it to Marvel and be like, hire me. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I haven't. I haven't. I wanted to do one. I just haven't gotten around. To it. I would love to see that. Yeah, it'll be it'll, sure. It'll be amazing. So, um, let's talk a little bit about your uh, influences and inspiration. Okay. Like, um, and kind of curious to see if that has changed from like your early days when you initially started to. Hmm. how you are as an artist now like do you think you've gone i'm I'm sure everybody goes through branches of different inspiration as you know totally yeah you go through your years but yeah well, i'm curious to know well oddly enough i i think it's it's been kind of uh cyclical it, it, it has just kind of gone around a little bit mm-hmm. not fully but I guess you could imagine it in a way of a spiral. Okay. Like it, it's come back around, but it hasn't touched where it left off, but it's close. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I originally started art school, I was super into like Salvador Dali surrealism, of but course. I also love Caravaggio with this attentivism, but very dark yep. in light uh, contrast. Um, and so I, I just wanted to do a lot of that. Mm-hmm. And, um, then I really got into portraiture a lot. And I, I got into it because I couldn't do it very well. So I just got obsessive about it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, just continue to work on it. I love it. And then I started discovering other portrait artists like Richard Schmidt and mm-hmm. Daniel Green and all of these guys and, and uh, all in love with their work. And then I I, can, I like set up an ideal of what I needed to be yeah. uh, as an artist, as a portrait artist. Uh I think I drew a lot of inspiration from just like the newer classical you know, realism, yeah. with, you know, artists that were a little bit more like brushy. And I mean, they could do beautiful realistic portraits, but they, they had a softer edge to them, you know, mm-hmm. with Jeremy Lincoln, Casey Paul, <clears throat> all of those artists. Sure. And uh, that, that's been like most of the middle of my, my artistic and now it's kind of coming back around to where I'm like even more the weirder shit, like yeah, <laughs> Salvador yeah. Dali kind of stuff. And I, you know, people who are just thinking outside of the box a little bit more rather than just painting a portrait work. Well, I think I spent a lot of years training myself to be able to do a portrait. Yeah. And, which which is kind of what uh, I wonder. Like, do you think a lot of people go into portraiture wanting to go into portrait portraiture, or it's just kind of a something like as you know, both you and I always I feel like worked in portraiture as a way of training ourselves you know it was uh yeah and then just kind of naturally that proceeded <clears throat> into being more of an actual career state uh staple or i was wondering like yeah, the people think, are like i want to be a portraiture and like especially modern day artists that is you know yeah yeah now i think uh i i do think because i went kind of both directions i i think i went um Wanting to just be a portrait artist and do a lot of commission work and just paint like oh, okay, like famous people. But I mean, when I first got started, I wanted to just paint. I didn't really know, but I yeah, I was open to exploring. Sure, and I still like painted weird things. Like the, do you remember that one painting or and drawing? I did a painting and a drawing of you and and Bryn. Oh yeah, I, I the, remember that. <laughs> the uh, stupid Chronicles of Bryn. <laughs> That was amazing. Yeah. Didn't I have bleached hair at that time too? Yeah, you had like your hair was white. And white. I, it was Ooh, uh it was right after I did the uh Mugatu. Mr. Mugatu cost uh Halloween costume. Yeah, yeah. And I <laughs> had Derek's sister um yeah, yeah. bleached my hair. Yeah, so. <laughs> and it was just like this white puff. Because mm-hmm. it was so fried. Oh yeah. Anyway, yeah. So I, yeah, that's when I was still exploring, like doing just thinking of funny things or you know kind of more abstract thinking rather than just like copying what I see. Um, yeah. Then I, I just really got into portrait and I thought this is what I want to do. I just want to paint, paint mm-hmm. portraits and uh, do commission work and do some of my own work and, and, and that that's it. And then 
I got burnt out on that doing commission work. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also, I just felt like I needed to explore more. Yeah. So that's where doing the fire came in. I, I think I I still love painting portraits, and I can still totally get lost in it. But I I also think um, I do need to like flex the creativity muscle again. And yeah, I feel like I'm just reteaching myself that how to use that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, I, know I, I just buried it away. So the fact that you're kind of uh, gearing towards a newer direction or older uh, inspiration you had back in the day, going back to that, do you think it's a sign that you yourself is uh, pretty satisfied with where you've reached in the sense of an artist, uh, being an artist as a portraiture artist? Like you reached that set skill that you're you're pretty proud of and you're like, okay, I think I could now go into like the things that I always wanted to at least. Yeah. Do do you feel that way at all? Or I think, uh, I always feel like I have, I've got room to grow. And of course. Yeah. And, uh, so I, I think I hold myself to a pretty hard standard. Mm -hmm. And so I, I will say, uh, you know what I'm doing? I'm doing well enough Mm -hmm. to be able to branch off a little bit, Yep. but I still need to refine this, this and that. And then I can do that even better. So, yeah, I would say I'm, I am accepting <laughs> of where I'm at. I think that's, um, I think that's a fair is, uh, statement for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I, I've got enough knowledge to where I can do a little bit more. So okay, I do a little bit more. All right. Um, kind of random question. And, oh yeah. Also oh. other influences include like, Oh yes. Different, uh, tons of music like i listen to music all the time like that's any kind of like sci-fi fantasy stuff too movies and all of it like that always will like hit a little ping for me and like make me think of you know something to do in my my yeah. work here and there and so yeah those are kind of just loosely other things i feel like i trail off in the other one i think it even say that so. we do ask a lot of the, we do ask a lot of the artists this question but like yeah how how's that translate into art is it like the music creates a certain story within your head that becomes a piece or what do you think? So I, I feel like I can use this reference. Like when I was really painting a, like heavy duty, a lot of fire portraits, I would listen to tool mm-hmm. as inspiration for that because tool has a, they just have the ability to mm-hmm. kind of set a very specific tone with sure. their music. Um, almost in a way that would kind of help you sink into like a deeper consciousness, I guess. And, mm-hmm. um, so I, I listened to them and would work on portrait fire portraits. And I, I feel like that was a pretty good combo. And then I, I've kind of evolved from there now. Now, uh, I'll listen to just like any general metal or audiobooks. <laughs> right. Right. So that's the other thing. Yeah. How far as you got in, uh, get into, uh, I think last time I checked with you, you were listening to Lord of the Rings. Oh yeah, I'm done with that. Now I'm into like, I, I've gone through so many books. It's <laughs> it's crazy. Like uh, uh, I'm doing The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss now, or okay. I'm in the second book, A Wise Man's Fear, or something like that. Okay. So what's been your favorite? It's like a 42 favorite? hour book. <laughs> Jesus, what's been your favorite uh, audiobook? Probably the Lord of the Rings. Yeah. That's just like special. Not to mention Andy Serkis reading, reading to you is just sounds really nice. Yeah. It was so cool when he, when Gollum finally like oh. made an appearance <laughs> and he's like doing Gollum's voice on it. And it's like, Oh, this is great. So yeah, it was really good. It's pretty amazing to imagine that he's doing the voice while also con- continuously. Re- I'm sure they'll get, they get breaks, right? I'm assuming it's not like a oh one, yeah one yeah, yeah. oh my god he had dude I think it was like seventy hours of book reading so or more than that so Gee. but to continue to narrate the book what immediately after doing the Gollum voice like Jesus that guy I hope he's still I'm sure he's still drinking his uh what was the Gollum juice that he created during wait what did he create he had this specific he... drink uh, he dubbed it the uh, Gollum juice I think uh, it was called oh it was basically something he uh, put together that's for his throat because it really puts a strain on his uh, vocal cords. Yeah, I can imagine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm sure he's been chugging that all day long too while yeah. shooting that. 
Well, he, that is doing like a dozens of different characters in the book too. So he's like, does he actually really do voice? Deep. Yeah, does he actually do yeah, voices does for everybody? Voice, different voice for everybody. So, do you think he? Wait, does he mimic like the uh, actor's voice from the movie, or does he kind of de- do his own thing? <laughs> he he kind of mimics their voice. Okay. Yeah, because Frodo sounds a lot like Frodo, and and like Mary and Pippin sound like a lot like that. I mean, they're not. It's not totally, but Gandalf sounds very Gandalf. Okay, I won't lie. I, I wasn't. I was not interested in uh, listening to that, but I kind of want to. I, I feel like it's a different. Thing. I, I was not into like listening to people do voices yeah. on a book, but once I, I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. And oh, because most of know, them are not that good. Maybe that's why. Yeah, there's a lot of them that, that aren't. <laughs> I mean, um, they have good voice, but, but like not good enough to do character voices. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. I, I thought, well, I'll give it a shot. And I loved listening to the Lord of the Rings. Uh, that whole series. I gotta, I gotta say something that may be a bit controversial. Two Towers, okay, isn't it? I Wait, would, what is it? Uh, Lord of the Rings, Two Towers. It's okay. Oh, the movie or the book? The book. Oh. I thought it was yeah. pretty boring. <laughs> really? <laughs> it was oh, I, I like it. I like getting all the Rohirrim in there and like, uh, like, like fe- learning their story. And like Fellowship was my favorite. Really? I, it was. Oh. I, I don't know. I, I like the Fellowship. The, the Fellowship is my favorite out of the movies, too. And the book was even better because they got a lot out of the book. You know? Yeah. Like they didn't even have Tom Bombadil. In I there know. So I, I was hoping there would have been an extended scene with him in it, but no. Yeah. Yeah. And then they added a bunch no, of random thing in The Hobbit, which made no sense. <laughs> like, no, dude, dude. Oh, my God. Yeah, the Hobbit was I, I was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> I mean, I'll still watch it, but yeah, yeah, it's, there's like so much extra and it's weird in yeah. a lot of ways. So but I heard that they rushed they rushed through that those movies really fast which so they didn't get to put like all uh, the, the hobbit the, the hobbit oh uh, okay yeah there. instead of having like like really taking their time like they did with lord of the rings yeah <clears throat> they rushed through and they like went heavy on the cgi they and, sure uh, did <laughs> yeah they went real heavy on that one well before this uh, podcast turns into our true feelings about the lord of the rings <laughs> the lord of the rings power <laughs> hour uh moving on <laughs> to the next question so um you are currently uh, in the uh, art program for to obtain your master's degree. Correct. Uh, do you see your work uh, moving towards a different direction uh, than when, uh, prior to, in comparison to prior to when you were actually get, achieving this or getting your degree? Let me rephrase that again. Is your do you see your work changing or making a new direction as your obtaining this uh master's degree like is there is there anything within the course that's making you look at your own work as it is right now and yeah yeah seeing a shift or i i think so yeah i think um i think it's probably going to start moving in a a different direction i think i'll probably always do some fire here and there yeah but now that i've let myself explore something outside of portraiture like i've I feel like I'm getting a little bit more ideas on what I want to do. And so, yeah. Can, can you share some of those ideas or is that a bit of a secret? I it's a secret. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I posted uh, some sketches a while back, a long time ago, but of, of a few, few things that I'm going to be doing oh. stuff. that's uh, a lot of it is like, it deals with mental health, but it also deals sure. with um, like childhood and how that kind of all intertwines together. They're just, they're like a bunch of uh, round sketches that I did for like Tondo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, know, I remember. Around yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the, oh, right, right, right. I remember you showing. Yes. Yeah. The Mickey Mouse zombie. Yeah. Well, it's not, uh, I have like Mickey Mouse tearing his face off. Mm. Oh, is that what's happening? Okay. Of course, that might. Yeah, you can. It's. I mean, it's a pretty rough sketch. Nice, nice. One's got like Mario Brothers background. Yeah, so that that's that's one direction I'm. I'd like to go. Okay. Nice. All right. 
And this is uh, the next question. It is the last one I have at the moment, but I might come up with another one in between. But anyways, what is a valuable lesson you've learned through your career, which you wished you knew when you started? Oh. A valuable lesson. I think maybe discipline and patience that I think that's that took mm -hmm. a while to to really like get in there and I'm still working on it <laughs> I mean because I used to get I would you know really bad wait to the last minute and mm -hmm. I still again will do that sometimes but as we're promoting uh, east right now I think we're both on the yeah, same yeah. boat <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> uh so it's you know I would I would do that really really bad mm -hmm. and uh, and I would stress myself out so much and I would just lose patience. I would be so upset about a piece that mm -hmm. I could not get right, but it was my own fault because I put it off and I didn't have the discipline to, to get through it. Do you ever do that? So, do you ever do that thing where, um, uh, you're kind of planning out your coming weeks in your head and you're like, okay, on this day, this is going to be what, this is going to be this, this is going to be that. And just kind of try to map out what you're going to be doing for the rest of the month or so. But in your mind, you're kind of overestimating your ability where you're like, okay, Constantly. on Monday and Tuesday, I'm going to be working on this ink drawing, which let's face it, it'll take maybe eight hours and in reality it's like it takes up to like 20 plus hours <laughs> you're just constantly because of your little yeah. slight miscalculation due to your uh, overestimation everything just slowly getting pushed back and back yeah. and back yeah totally <laughs> yeah I, I this is my life yeah completely i i also apparently live in a 42 hour day oh yeah at least my brain thinks i do <laughs> where i'm like so I'm going to start this piece. It's going to be four foot by eight. I will finish it on Tuesday. And then it's like, there's no way I'm going to get all of, you know, then in between, I'm going to walk the dogs and going to wash my car, mm -hmm. do all my taxes. You know, it's so it's, I, I, it's not realistic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've got, Definitely that's where my job. discipline and stuff has to do match up a little bit better with the way my brain works. Right. And, uh, you're going to have to, you know, think what realistically am I going to be able to do? Mm -hmm. And I will likely run into some sort of speed bump. That's going to knock everything back. Mm -hmm. So it's always a speed bump. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, Ronnie son, we're going to go into our favorite part of the interview, which is lightning round. <laughs> <laughs> Choo -choo. Wasn't sure if you thought the question express the question. No, the lightning round. Wait, wait. I thought question express was the lightning round. No, wait, what's the lightning round? Lightning round is where I uh, ask you a bunch of random ass oh, questions. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> you uh, are now on yeah. the receiving end of this, so you can feel all the okay. pain. Uh, all right, lightning round. Mm -hmm. Hit me. So as always, I'll be asking a series of ten questions. Um, take it however you would like. But answer as quickly as possible, whatever comes into your head first. All right. Okay. Here we go. Number one, cats or dogs? Very easy. Cats. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. Number two, ramen or spaghetti? Spaghetti. Yeah. We're not friends anymore. <laughs> 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 Number three. Tool or Meshuga? Tool. Okay. Number four. Are you a Naoto or a Rodney? A Naoto. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right. This is a bit of a hard one. And I limited a lot of the other options to kind of simplify it. But as usual, you know, answer it however you like. Even if the answer is okay. not in there. If you had to pick one class from the famous Dungeons and Dragons series, what would you be? A cleric, a fighter, a sorcerer, a bard, a druid, a ranger, or a barbarian? 
sorcerer. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. There were other options too, but I, I, I wasn't sure if you knew the rest of the, like, I, I, no, I'm not super familiar with it, <laughs> <laughs> but the sorcerer sounds sorcerer. cool. Cool. Yeah. All right. Number six, <clears throat> the sky's the limit. What is your superpower? Hmm. Super strength. Okay. Yeah, I might take that. Okay. Number seven. This is kind of the, uh, what is that called? The uh, Lonely Island game or the mental training thing. Okay. If you could pick one art supply for life, but only use that particular one, what will it be? Ooh. And just to correct you, it's not a set of things. It's just one. Just one specific okay. thing. <laughs> well, uh, for the sake of say, if, if you're about to say oil painting, a brush will come with it. Okay. Uh, I think a 2B charcoal pencil. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, number eight. What is your top three favorite movie? Go. Oh, Fight Club's probably the number one. Ooh, nice. uh, I love that. I love the just to look at the duality and trauma and everything that goes in there and mm -hmm. like looking at yourself. And, yep. Anyway, so yeah, that one. <clears throat> that's, that's right on theme with you. Yeah. Um, okay. It's, it's kind of a, a rotating thing. The original Matrix. Sure. Great. Also Great. dealing with reality and whatnot, uh, you know, and uh, just you know, dealing with our inner self and what's, you know, true for us and, you know, what's real, what's not real. Anyway, uh, sir, are you stalling time by explaining yourself? <laughs> <laughs> no, I like these. I was just trying to explain that. Uh, maybe Dumb and Dumber. Okay, go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, 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 that's fine. Oh, Dumb and Dumber is a great choice. Great choice. Yeah. Uh, number nine. Who do you think is, in your opinion, a an underrated band? Ooh. Underrated band. Oh my God, I am so not not up with the tunes anymore. Who's an underrated band? Death? Did you say death or geth? Death. D-E-A-T-H. I do not know them. They are like the godfathers of death metal. Oh. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, a lot of people appreciate them, but... Okay. Well, yeah. I didn't know it, so... There you go. Yeah, there you, you go. You a new one. Yeah. Yeah. And number 10, this is a big one. Why should people take their time out of their day to listen to this stupid podcast? <laughs> uh, God, I don't even have an answer for that one. <laughs> <laughs> there truly is no good reason. Um, well, if you're having a bad day, you can at least feel smarter by listening to us. That's true. Although yeah. they'll, it'll make it, it'll make them maybe a little bit dumber by the end of it. <laughs> it could bring down the IQ a few points, yeah. but that might bring you into ignorance is bliss. That is so, also true. Yeah. But. I mean, it's just a win-win situation if you listen to us. <laughs> All right. So it's just because this is kind of a, you know, a normal thing for us whenever we're interviewing somebody, uh, we are going to continue the question train. The question train. Oh, the question train. And since this is kind of a um, conjoint episode, we're we're both gonna in our uh, segment answer the same question, which was from okay. uh, Jose, our yeah. last interviewee. Which his question was, uh, "What would you dedicate your life to if you weren't an artist?" Oh my God, this is so. His answer was a firefighter. Terrible. Yeah. I think when I was a kid, I wanted to be a paleontologist. I'm, I'm also, I'm wondering if it's something that you always wanted to be or more or less with the knowledge you have now, like, what would you have, like, what would you have preferred to do? Oh, I, I don't like, know. Uh, I, I don't know. What, 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 if what, I what, couldn't be mm. like, like if it was like, yeah, I, I wonder if it's as a kid, if, if there's a little, uh, 
a fork in the road, one being an artist, and there's another one that you wanted to do instead of becoming an artist, or now currently, while being asked this question, what would you prefer to have done? You, you, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, with the current okay, knowledge so or without it? I don't know. What, what do you think? Should we? Should it be what we wanted to be as a kid, or? I feel like just just saying, like in general, uh-huh. if we couldn't be an artist, yeah. like if that profession did not exist for us, what do you think? What it would have been? do you think you would be? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's go with that. Okay. I would probably say I always wanted to be a paleontologist. Oh, really? I'm not. I'm not smart enough for that, so I would likely just be doing grunt work. <laughs> <laughs> paleontologist. <laughs> so yeah, something with digging up dinosaurs. Nice. I or, I mean, I, I think that could have evolved into maybe doing anthropology, because I always like that, too. Anthropology? I or see. anthropology. Yeah. The study of humans. Yes. I think I could see you doing that. Paleontology. You'd be cool. I'm fascinated by especially. It. Yeah. Yeah. That would be a lot of fun for me. Is it because of Jurassic Park? That helped. I <laughs> wanted to be it before that. But yeah, yeah that helped a lot. <laughs> Once Jurassic Park came out, I was like, that's it. I'm doing it. <laughs> and some ass is going to fly in with a helicopter and going to cover it and get all mad and mm-hmm. walk up to him and stir up exactly. the time. Yeah. All right. So that's a, I think that's a fantastic answer. And you actually answered it pretty quickly to my surprise. All right. Well, so this is kind I'm of good a, at, I'm good at lightning round. You are really good at lightning round. Well, this is a, a bit of a shorter episode since, again, it's kind of bundled into two. So we're going to be concluding here in one moment. But before we go, um, what we, uh, what can people expect uh, from this coming East, which we're currently promoting, uh, as far as your work goes? Well, it's going to be a lot of like uh, the firework. There might be a few newer different pieces in there, but generally the fire pieces that I've been doing. Yeah, that's going to be. Yeah. Are there some uh, new works that are not currently on Instagram or things that people keep, don't have access to that will be sh- showcased there? Or is it all? Nice. Are all the cards on the table? All the cards are on the table right now. Okay. I mean, unless I bring like normal portraiture, like said portrait. Yeah, bring but that. Likely. Bring that. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe I will. Oh, it's on a panel. How hard could it be to shove it in there it'd be easy to ship yeah mm-hmm. and finally uh give us a bit more information on where people can find your work um if i actually generally don't know outside outside of east are there any other exhibition uh you might be doing for the remaining of the year or yeah the future schedule of yours uh what can we expect i from think you? i think i i'm currently as we were speaking now going to be in a show uh Hang on. I, I think it'll be going through this long with uh, Basecamp Studios in Seattle. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, with Wild... I think it's Wild X Wow or Wild by Wow. I'm so sorry, <laughs> Jim, for not saying it right if I did, but it's uh, it's an online gallery and you can find it on... It's like Wild X Wow on Instagram. Okay. You can see uh, that. So I'll be... I just submitted a new piece mm-hmm. with that. Nice. And uh, when is that happening? I can give you a little sneakity peekity. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. And a little bit more of my. Nice. I've been I've been staring at that every time we had this. uh, Podcast video chat. So that's where it's going to go. Wait, wasn't that for didn't you submit that for it? Was it Eden? uh i that's what it was originally planned for and then i didn't oh, get it finished in time oh, yeah okay. so now it goes to wow as well yeah i submitted a different one to eden oh nice nice well that's look. yeah yeah uh when is the actual uh exhibition uh, i believe the 7th october 7th is when it launched so yeah and then it'll go through so like well yeah i guess it's probably it might be done by now oh, so it's- <laughs> <laughs> but it was Ex- there you can go look on the uh there yeah. it's- <laughs> yes uh yes yeah sorry guys uh yeah, we're, we're shooting this a little ahead of time <laughs> i mean we're live we're live yes live. yes no, no trickeries here 
All right. And obviously, uh, people could find your work on Instagram under the handle Ronnie Thompson Art. You also have a website, Ronnie Thompson Yeah. And or Rodney Thompson art.com. Anywhere else uh, people should? I'm on check ahead. TikTok now. Uh, oh, nice. Rodney Thompson art. Okay. Twitter at Rodney Tomps art. You I don't even use I have like two followers on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> so like, well, people go and uh, flock on there and yeah, go yeah. subscribe or follow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, give me a follow. All right. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically it. Okay. Are you, you're not on the little blue birdie? Wait, the what? T- uh, Twitter. Oh, no, I saw I said on Twitter. Rodney. I just said Twitter. Rodney Tom's oh, okay. Story. Yeah. I missed. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. You should be. I am. You should I, be. I am. I am. Well, yeah. on that note, Ronnie, thank you very much uh, for your time. Uh, it's my pleasure. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, following this particular episode, um, we are starting East. <laughs> Uh, location is if you're in Austin and you'd like to come check us out, uh, it is going to be in Springdale General, right on Springdale. Um, yeah, I will post most more information, actual address, and all that stuff on our social media. Yeah. So yeah, come take a look. I personally won't be there on both Saturdays, but Ronnie's on. I be. should be. It should be. Yeah. And if not, I'm definitely going to be there on Sundays. Even if not. Uh, the doors are open, so come check us yep. out. And uh, we might actually, I mean, fingers crossed, we're working on it, but we might have merch for this uh, podcast too, so. We might. Yeah. 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 So come. You can buy some Two Idiots merch. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Swag. If we have the time. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, from now to when I can get our shit together, that's the main thing. Exactly. I think right there. Well, Mostly again, me. <laughs> no, uh, both of us. <laughs> well, once again, Rodney, thank you very much. Uh, folks, thank you so much yeah, for you. listening to this particular episode. And coming up next, which will be the following week, is role's gonna be reverse. Rodney Sound will be interviewing me. And it's my turn. Uh, all right. <laughs> well, folks, until then, thank you very much for listening. I'll check in on you, or we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Goodbye. The making art. You're talking art. One of the soul gowns. it's on. I have a great idea. Oh, uh, what is it? The other asked. Let's do a podcast. And so have begun to wedding us talking about art. To wedding us talking about art.